Okay, well, I'm trying to explain to you what I've been doing. Um, first, you need to export data out of DCS. And to do that, you need two locations. Uh, one is your games folder. And that's the location where you installed your game and it should be under program, Eagle Dynamics, DCS World, and you'll find a scripts folder. And inside that scripts folder, you find a file called export.lua. And it's great that you have that file. It should be in there, but it doesn't do anything, at least not in that location. So what you got to do is you got to right click and then copy. And then you go to your saved games folder. That is in your, your user account, saved games, DCS. And you'll find the scripts folder too. And when you look inside, if you have a fresh installation, then this should be empty. There should be nothing in there. Um, chances are that you already have an export.lua in there. And um, that is for add-ons or for any other export. So many, many add-ons use this export.lua. So when you mess with it, just copy your original export.lua somewhere and have a backup of it. And if you want to change something in there, at least you should know in a general uh, sense of what you're doing. So let's let's look at what we could do with the export.lua file. And I have opened it up uh, in here. And to give you an idea, um, just um, we're going to start with a pretty blank sheet. So that's five functions inside the export.lua and they are empty here so pretty blank but just know what these functions are uh, the first function is lua export start and the code in that function um, is being executed when the mission starts when you start your flight lua export before next frame is uh, executed each time before a frame is rendered so if you want to write anything into the uh, software then that's where you should do it uh, then there's Lua export after next frame. Well, that is the code that is being run after the frame was rendered. And if you want to export anything out of DCS, then that's the place where you should uh, export it right after the frame was rendered. Lua export stop is a function that is called once uh, when the mission stops. So at the end of the game, when you uh, click on that quit button, uh, then that code is being run once at the right after the last frame. And then there's Lua export activity next event, and it comes with an argument, T. Uh, whatever you write in there is being executed at regular intervals uh, of T seconds. So if you want something every eight or nine seconds, um, then you should put the code in here, and I can show you how to do it. It's, it's pretty simple. So that's basically our blank export.lua. Um, well, let's try to do something with it. Um, the important thing is I've been talking about here, uh, export blank.lua. You got to copy this code inside your export.lua and then save it. And only the export.lua will be executed. All the other files are just uh, for my personal pleasure. So let's see what we could do. Um, let's take the content of this file, copy it, and put it inside the export.lua. And then you can save it, and then you can run it. So what is it going to do? It's going to create a log file. And right now it's nil, but when lua export start, the first function is being called, that log file is being, uh, well, basically we're telling it to say, hey, use the input-output tool case, and then open this file. You know, if, if it's not there, then create it and prepare it to write to it. And then comes uh, before next frame, we're not doing anything in there. And then comes Lua export after next frame. So once the first frame has been rendered and there is actually a game running, we are declaring a local variable, indicated airspeed, and we're filling it with this value, uh, low get indicated airspeed. That's a function that returns the indicated airspeed in meters per second. And then we're going uh, log file write string dot format. And we're giving it this string. And there's this indicated airspeed, a colon. Well, that's a placeholder. And that means make a new line. And then there's a comma. And that indicated airspeed is right. That's this variable. So what we're basically telling it is, hey, put this string in there and replace this placeholder with whatever comes here. So this placeholder is being replaced. And it's got four digits behind the, the, the decimal. And we're writing it into a file. Uh, into which file? Into log file. It's the one that we have uh, established up here. So for every frame, we're writing the indicated airspeed into that log file. And then when we're done with the simulation, um, when we're quitting and leaving the game, then uh, Lua export stop is called once. So we're basically writing to the log file exit just to finish the, uh, to have something at the end so that we know that the file has come to an end. And if the log file still exists, then log file close and it's back to a nil value. So that's all we're doing. And let's take a look at how that works. We're having, it, uh, we're having this code in the export.lua. Uh, it's saved. And then once you go to DCS and you hit on fly, 
you can do anything you want inside. I'm going to play around a little bit with it and uh, take the power back to idle. And you can see that my airspeed is somewhere around 380 knots indicated airspeed. And we pull up the nose to lead off some airspeed. And it's decreasing and decreasing. And that was pretty much all we need to do. We're going to quit. And then we can take a look at what we actually did inside your saved games folder there is another folder called logs and there's a whole bunch of logs in there and since we just told it to create a file for us at this location inside that dcs logs uh, save games dcs logs data.txt we will find inside dcs logs our file data.txt let's take a look inside of it and that's it. Here we have the indicated airspeed in meters per second, 190 some meters per second. That's uh, yeah, around about 300, almost 400 um, in knots indicated airspeed. And then as you can see, um, for every frame, there's a value. And then as soon as we pull up the nose, uh, the airspeed starts to drop and we're bleeding down to about yeah, 90 some meters per second. And at the end of our uh, recording, we sent exit. So we know that actually the entire uh, flight was recorded. Great, so that's uh, uh, one way of exporting data out of DCS into a file. Now, in motion simulation, I didn't want to have it in a file. I needed it in, a, um, in, a, in another program, and the only way I found to be able to do that was uh, sending it through the network. So let's take a look how we can send data out of uh, DCS into a network stream. And we have this uh, network uh, Lua that I wrote. Let's copy it and put it inside our export.lua, save it. Now this is our active export.lua. Let's take a look what it does. In the Lua export start, uh, we're basically telling it, uh, hey, if you're looking for something, this is where you should look. And what we're saying is, hey, socket is what it, uh, we require a socket. So whatever you get from this, put it in here. Our IP address is this. That's the local host. We're sending it to ourselves. And if we say port, then we mean this number. So the next part is not kick a socket, is socket.try. So basically we're telling it, hey, give me a socket on this IP address and this port number. And we're telling it on their set options that we want to send data via TCP, no delay. So that's all. We have a socket we can write to the network stream. Uh, nothing in here. And then after next frame, so whenever a frame was being rendered, we're getting this function, low get indicated airspeed. Uh, we're putting it in that variable, and then we go socket.try, nutkicker.socket.send, uh, string.format, and we're sending a string, and it is exactly in the same format as um, previously when we wrote into a file. And that's instead of writing it to a file, we're writing it to a network stream. And at the end, uh, when we finish the last frame, not kick a socket. Well, if that socket still exists, then send exit and socket close. So we're basically um, freeing up these resources for the operating system. So let's see what it does. Save the export.lua. I could show it to you in all its beauty. If you want to use it, just copy it. And we can, um, of course, only read it if we have a program that actually reads from the network stream. So here we have that, and then we can go here, fly again, and it says waiting for connection, DCS connected, so the function has just been called, and as soon as we hit fly, the data comes flying in. And whatever we do here, we can see it in, in real time. Now if we pull up the nose and let the airspeed bleed out, then you can see that we're actually bleeding airspeed, it, it bleeds down to almost zero. So escape quit and it sends exit great everything was transferred i love it now something else that i would like now something else that i would like to show you is um, instead of just writing just anything to the network in this case we just wrote the indicated airspeed we might as well uh, write all other things that we're interested in and there are a couple of interesting functions this is the the code that i'm using um, to get indicated airspeed, I have this function called low get indicated airspeed or low get Mach number or low get true airspeed or low get vector velocity, and all kinds of stuff that you can um, write into these variables. And then in the end, you write it all in one nice long string to a network stream. Well, that's how I did it.
And so uh, yeah, you're free to play around with it. Uh, start with writing stuff to a file, then start writing stuff to a network, uh, to a socket, and then you could do all kinds of other things with it. And I hope you enjoy it as much as I did.